Right, welcome back to this final video. Um, I'd just like to show you my process for prepping something like this for 3D printing. Um, it's a process I've developed to ease the burden of some of the processes within ZBrush and I hope it makes sense. Well, firstly, I'm going to have to merge this model and that might take a while so I might pause the video for a second. Go over to Merge Visible and be patient. Right, that took about 25 seconds to do and now over here we have the merge version of our model. What I like to do instantly is duplicate. I'm just going to turn the paint off because it's a little bit distracting and I'll go into solo mode. So you'll see here we've still got the poly groups I use for UVs. We've got lots of intersecting mesh parts as well. That's not ideal for 3D printing. Slicers don't like it. It can cause you all sorts of problems. So using DynaMesh and I use EasyMesh, which is part of Ryan's tools. I'll show you a link to that. Just an easier way of doing DynaMesh. Set it to six and wait. There we go. That was nice and quick. I'm just gonna group all and it's given us quite a basic version of our high poly. We're going to use this to our advantage though. It's closed the holes for us. So here we have the high poly above and the dynamesh version. What we're first going to do is project all. Keep it in solo mode so we can see what we're doing. We'll divide them again and project all. Now each time you subdivide something you're timesing it by four. So what you might find is that every projection is four times longer to do. ZBrush is really crunching the numbers on this. But my motives for doing this with a dynameshed version of the high poly is so if you look at the poly count, we're at 1.5 at the moment. We've got a fair bit of detail, but I think we can go further. So divide again and project all. Okay, we're back. That last projection took about three and a half minutes to do, so I didn't put you through that. It's not come out too bad at all. Again, it's a DynaMesh. There's one or two areas we can go in and just tidy up. I have to do a little bit of detailing just to kill some of the noise. Now we have this airtight balloon, which slices absolutely adore using. And we're at 6.23 million polys. So what I like to do is go to Decimation Master pre-process current. This might take a while so I'll pause again. Okay we're back. Um, Pre-processing files in Decimation Master can take an age. That took about four minutes. But in ZBrush 2021 that's a lot faster than before. So kudos guys, that's amazing. So we pre-processed this 6.23 million poly DynaMesh with projected details from our high resolution model. Um, I'm just gonna go for 20% decimation and see what we get. The goal is to give something that is gonna be admittedly high for a slicer, but I've taken models in higher than this. This is 1.2 million polys now, and it really has retained most of the detail you zoom in. It's such an incredibly clever process. We could have maybe not decimated it as much as we did, but I think you'll, you'll agree that's, especially the 3D printers out there, this is more than acceptable. Anyway, I hope you found my process useful. There's the high poly on the left, here's the decimated 3D print ready model. 
And if you like what you see, please subscribe and like. I will try and keep regular uploads, lots of tricks and tips in ZBrush, lots of time lapses and more tutorials. If you have purchased the asset and project files through Flip Normals, I do appreciate your support. If you haven't, again, I just hope you enjoy watching the videos. Anyway, take care for now.